many a Star Citizen player will recognise the slogan, Crusader Industries, a journey worth taking. And given that this is an in-game company renowned for its pedigree in transportation, it feels like it fits. In this video, we'll take you on a journey looking at Crusader Industries, the ships they build, a little of the history and purpose of the company, and a look at the design language and style. In case you don't recognise my voice, I'm Farrister, and I'll be your host through this spotlight. I regularly upload Star Citizen videos onto YouTube, so if this kind of thing tickles your fancy, you might like to subscribe to be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. Starting with some of the ships, there are a number of Crusader Industries vessels already available for players to use in the game. The first is the Mercury Star Runner, ostensibly a courier ship, but in reality a bit of a jack of all trades. In fact, you'd be forgiven for thinking it almost like a Millennium Falcon type ship. The MSR sits in the mid-range of multi-crew, able to be flown solo or with a small crew, and also able to ferry a decent amount of cargo or ground vehicles, as well as give a fair showing in a combat scenario. Then there's the Hercules series of ships, the C2, M2 and A2. Whilst well suited for transporting ground vehicles, the Hercules also excels at cargo transport, and takes a lot of features from the MSR and supersizes them to the next scale up. We also see a little more of the types of living and functional spaces that Crusader Industries offers. And then there's the Ares series of Starfighters, the Ion and Inferno. Visually, they look very similar to the MSR, and take on a bespoke role in the combat sphere, offering a much higher calibre of firepower than your average heavy fighter. But Crusader Industries is also widely known in the game for transporting people. The shuttles at Orizon are a great representation of the Crusader style, and also give a hint to what we might see from the Genesis Starliner, which is an especially interesting ship. Not yet in the game, the Genesis could end up being a more antiquated style of ship, as a mass personnel transport ship, potentially similar to how a big jet airliner operates today. And finally, in the not-in-game category, there's the Jupiter Carrier, which supposedly started life to deliver Crusader industry shuttles, but became so popular that they started being sold as a ship in their own right. It's not clear whether the Jupiter will ever make it into the game though. As with many of the in-game manufacturers, Crusader Industries has an interesting story behind it. If you're really interested in that, I'd highly recommend visiting the Astropub. I've linked the Galactic Historian video specifically concerning Crusader Industries down below and at the end of this video, and it's a fantastic exploration of some of the story. Founded by August Dunlow, the namesake of the spaceport on Orison, Crusader Industries was born from a small-scale shuttle manufacturer called Seraphim Systems. August Dunlow purchased the company and became the first CEO of Crusader Industries. By all accounts, August Dunlow was a very capable and very persuasive individual, able to mould success from many a situation. Some 65 years later, the company purchased what is now known as the planet Crusader in the Stanton system, particularly suited to large ship construction due to the favourable conditions for human habitation, but also low gravity at altitude for working on ships. Crusader industry ships certainly have their own unique style, both in and out of the ship. Starting with the externals, the use of heavily contrasting black and white gives many of the lineup a really distinct feel, almost channeling the Space Shuttle Orbiter. There are combinations of fairly smooth, machined plates, with some of the little details around like fuel lines or thrusters. The designs tend to look sleek and aerodynamic, which gives them that very distinctive profile. Internally, there is also a Crusader Industries style. The smooth panels from outside make their way inside too, and are often combined with contrasting detail, such as pipework or grills. There's also the iconic circular corridors on the MSR and Hercules, which really add to that spacecraft feeling. And they often lead to the cockpit, 
which shares a similar design style in both ships, with a familiar side-by-side -side seating arrangement, looking fairly recognisable and in a similar way to what you might expect from an airliner cockpit. Which makes sense, given the Crusader industry's pedigree in personal transportation. Much of the style could be described as making a clean, functional layout, not to an origin level of trying to cover up all of the inner workings of the ship if it's impractical to do so, but more so than Drake, who are happy to leave all of the pipes and cables hanging from the wall. You see that in some of the living spaces, where more time has been taken to give that clean, functional space, but probably not quite making it to the premium feel. You can probably tell, but I'm a big Crusader Industries fan, the ships all have a wonderful personality of their own, and much of the design language carries between them giving a clear sense of, hey, this is Crusader Industries. I'd love to know what you think, either of Crusader Industries and their ships, or of this style of video, and whether it's something you'd like to see more of for different manufacturers. You can do that by sharing your specific thoughts in the video comments, or pressing that like button so I know you'd like to see more videos like this. Otherwise, and as ever, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.